Hi everyone, this is Emily Brozovic from Learning Design and Technology here with a quick tutorial on how to use checklists in desire to learn Checklists are a great way to help your students stay organized and up to speed on what's expected of them during your class. desire to learn offers a great tool for this, called Checklists, to do exactly that. In this tutorial, you can expect to learn how to set up checklists and link them directly into your course content area. So, let's get started. Checklists in desire to learn can be found directly under the Course Tools option and Checklist. Now you'll notice in my course you'll see that I have a notification here that says About Me is due on February 16th. Keep that in mind because we're going to touch base with that as we go through the tutorial. So I'm going to go ahead and go to Checklist and you'll see I already have some checklists made in here but for this tutorial I'll make a new one and I'm going to say New Checklist. I'm going to give it a name, let's say this is for Week 1. I can give this a description if I want, but I don't have to. Go ahead and hit save. So now I've essentially set up a new checklist, but of course I'm going to need items on this checklist. The first thing you need to do is create what's called a new category. Desire to Learn requires you to create at least one category, so even if you don't think that you want to break your checklist out into different categories, know that you have to create at least one to get started. So let's say new category. And in this case, I'm going to break out different portions of this week's module. So I'm going to say readings is category number one. And I'm going to go ahead and hit save and new. And I'm going to make another category. And in this category, I'm going to put lab exercises and save. So now you see down here at the bottom, I've created two categories, which can be checked on their own, but obviously this wouldn't be very helpful. So now I want to create new items that will go underneath these particular categories. So I'm going to go ahead and click new item and we'll stick with the readings. I'm going to say chapter one. I'm going to give it a description. Now this is what I was talking about early in the tutorial when you saw on my home on my course homepage that I had something due on my calendar. If you want particular items due on a particular day, you can select due date, which will then set a reminder for your students, and you can also choose to display in the calendar, which is what I had on my course home page when we first logged in. So chapter one with a little description, it's due on a particular day and I also want to display it in the calendar. So I'm going to say save and new so that we can create another one. In this case, chapter two. I'm not going to put a description. I will put a due date. Let's change the day. And I won't display this in the calendar. And let's add one more. Chapter three. I won't check the due date or the calendar so you can see the difference between the three. So go ahead and hit save. So as I'm creating these you see under the readings category I have chapter one, chapter two, chapter three. You'll notice chapter one has a notification which we had set uh, with due date and display and calendar. So I also had another category for lab exercises so let's say I want a new item lab exercises, complete lab exercise number one. And I'm going to give this a due date as well. And save. Once you're happy with your checklist and you have it all set up, we'll hit save. And now you'll see right here, I have week one checklist. But if you're going to do multiple checklists, say for a weekly basis, or based on modules that you're creating, or particular lessons, it's a good idea to create all of your checklists first. And then we can link it up in our content and move from there. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the content page. 
and you see some earlier examples that I already have in here. But let's say that under the examples module I want to add the checklist that I just created. I need to go to the module that I want to add my checklist to. I want to go to new quick link because I've already created my checklist, remember. So again the parent module is under the examples and I'm going to say this is our week one checklist. I can call it something different, it does not have to be the same name as the checklist. And for the content, you want to click this little link button right here. And now we're going to choose checklist. And now we can check this week one checklist that we just created. Notice that if you don't make your checklist first, you can certainly create them right within here. It will take you to a new window and you will have to essentially do what we just did um, and then come back here to link it. So that's why we recommend creating all your checklists first and then coming in here and doing the quick link. So I'm going to insert and you can choose if you'd like this particular checklist to open in a new window or tab. I'm going to leave that unchecked and I'm going to say save and close. And now you will see the week one checklist is right here for students within the content area. And if I click on that, you'll see it shows in the content view any information on particular days that it is due and any notes that I made about that particular topic are right here. So now students can go along and check off assignments as they complete them. Thanks very much for watching. I hope this helps you with creating checklists in your new course.